hello everybody and welcome to another youtube video and in this video we are going to be talking about the concept of hypothesis testing and inferential statistics in general but before i dive deeply into these two beautiful terms i have to make you understand some key terms so let's start by defining the concept of statistics Basically, statistics is a branch of mathematics that deals with how we collect, organize, analyze, and present data in order to draw out conclusion and extract insights from these data sets to solve real life problem. It's as simple as that. So basically, we have two branches of statistics. We have what we call the descriptive statistics and we have the inferential statistics. As the name implies, descriptive statistics helps you to describe and summarize your data sets without making conclusions from this data set. Under this aspect of statistics, we use things like measure of central tendency, which includes the mean, median, mode, and we also use our data visualization as techniques such as bar charts the pie charts the histogram just to mention a few now inferential statistics on the other hand is a branch of statistics that deals with how we make conclusion from a data set by making inference on the population data via the sample data now when it comes to inferential statistics two things are very key right here number one is the population data and number two is the sample data but in the long run you are going to be using the sample data to make inference on the population data by inference it simply means that we want to study the population we want to understand the population but we don't have access to the population based on some restrictions so we rather extract a sample from the population and use the sample to understand the important details about the population so let's try to understand the concept of population and sample first so in a more generalized manner a population is a total available data regarding a group of things or a group of people now that's just it so some of the properties that defines the population includes the fact that population is actually very very large it's hard to analyze it's hard to work on on and it takes a lot of time to analyze so that is why it's called the population it's really 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 big now the details that defines the population are known as a parameter so that means that details like the population size the population mean the population variance the population standard deviation the population proportion just to mention a few we are interested in all of those details but like i said earlier on we can't have access to them so we have to use the sample to extract those details that we need from the population now what is a sample in its simplest form a sample is an extract of a population or you can say a sample is a fraction of a population any detail that defines a sample is known as a statistic not statistics statistic with the c and not the s so example of statistic include the sample mean we have the sample variance we have the sample standard deviation we have the sample proportion we have the sample size and so much more now the act of removing a sample the right amount of sample from the population in order to make inference on the population is called sampling now the technique that we use to extract the right amount of sample from the population is known as the sampling techniques and we have several types of then we have the simple random sampling technique we have the stratified sampling technique we have the cluster sampling technique we have the systematic sampling technique all of these make up the probabilistic sampling technique and we have the like of the convenience sampling we have the judgmental sampling we have the volunteer sampling we have the snowball sampling all of this makes up the non-probabilistic sampling technique so in simple terms the probabilistic sampling technique tries to reduce biases over time but the non-probabilistic sampling technique kind of have a form of bias here and there and each of these techniques that we use to sample they have an advantage over each other now sampling technique is something that i will still discuss extensively on this channel so if you want to get notified when that video comes live just subscribe to this youtube channel now remember i said that we are interested in all of the details that defines the population so that means we are interested in the population size the population mean the population standard deviation population variance and all of those stuff and we use the sample to actually make inference on this so that simply means that the population mean is what we are interested in but we cannot get it so we have to use the sample mean to get the value of the population mean so uh the sample mean is an estimate of the population mean the sample variance is an estimate of the population variance uh, the sample standard deviation is an estimate of the population standard deviation and so much more when you use a single value of the sample statistic to estimate a single value of the population parameter then we have what we call 
point estimation but when you use a range of values that has been calculated from the sample to estimate the value of a single value of the population then we have what we call the interval estimation so that means we have two types of estimation in statistics the point estimation and the interval estimation and the interval estimation is also known as the confidence interval these are topics that i will treat extensively in later videos so in summary in fresher statistics is how you are going to be using the sample statistic to make inference on the population parameter i think that makes sense so now that i've given you an insight of what the world of sample and population is and in fresher statistics in general we have to talk about the thing that takes the center stage when it comes to inferential statistics and that is hypothesis testing now remember that i said inferential statistics uses the sample data to estimate the population data in order to make decision so one of the key properties that defines inferential statistics is that you want to make decision you want to make a final conclusion now at the center stage of inferential statistics we have hypothesis testing now let us try to dissect this two word hypothesis and testing from the general standpoint hypothesis is just an initial statement that can either be right or wrong he is guilty he is not guilty he is a liar he is not a liar those are hypotheses okay and they can either be right or wrong until they have been proven right or wrong i think that makes sense to you now in the context of statistics hypothesis is actually an initial statement an initial assertion regarding a population parameter that can either be right or wrong when you test the validity of an hypothesis using statistical techniques and theory then you are performing hypothesis test and i think it's as simple as that so hypothesis test is a statistical technique that is used to test the initial assertion or the initial statements regarding a population parameter that in the long run will be rejected or fail to be rejected now that is just the basis of hypothesis testing now we have rules that guide hypothesis testing meaning that when it comes to statistics before you perform hypothesis tests we actually have some set of rules or some set of steps that you have to follow i think give or take there are like six or five of them some scholars say there are seven but i will try to uh, list them out the best way i can so the first step to hypothesis test is to state the null and alternative hypothesis so that backs the question what exactly is the null and alternative alternative hypothesis so let's start with the null hypothesis so the null hypothesis is the initial statement or it is the initial assertion regarding a population parameter it can either be right or wrong please note that i mentioned the word population parameter what i'm trying to say is that whenever you are stating a null hypothesis you don't state it regarding to the or relative rather to the sample statistic you always state your null hypothesis regarding to the population parameter now we use the letter h subscripts not to denote the null hypothesis and uh, so let's say for example we are interested in the average age of students in a university so let's say i mentioned a sentence like the average age of students in this school is 16 years so that statement right there is the null hypothesis if i want to state this using statistical notations in quotes i can write it as h naught uh, and i have the semicolon mu is equals to 16. the mu in this case of ours represents the population mu, and this sentence simply means that the average age of students in this school is equals to 16 years now one thing you need to know when stating your null hypothesis is based on the fact that the null hypothesis must always contain the equality sign meaning is either you have a straight up equality sign or you have greater than or equals to or you have lesser than or equals to and that is just it your null hypothesis must always contain the equality sign on the flip side we have the alternative hypothesis and this is the sentence that always goes against the null hypothesis so what do i mean let's still go back to the example i used earlier on the null hypothesis stated that the average age of students in this school is 16 years old so that means i can say that h naught is that mu is equals to 16. so when it comes to the alternative hypothesis we use uh h subscript one or we use h subscript a to denote note it so in the context of the null hypothesis our alternative can be h1 is that mu is greater than 16 which means oh the average age can be more than 16 we can also have that h1 is that mu is lesser than 16 which means that the average age is lesser than 16 or we can say h0 is that mu is not equal to 16 which simply means that the age of the student can be more than 16 or it can be lesser than 16. now after stating your null and alternative hypothesis the next step is for you to determine the direction of your test now basically when it comes to hypothesis test our test can have have two directions the test can either be a one tail test or it can either be a two tail test now under the one tail test your test can either be right tailed or 
left stilled. Now, let's go back to the example I used earlier on. You know, I said something like the null hypothesis is that uh, mu is equals to 16 years. Then, where I mentioned something around the alternative is that mu is greater than 16 years. In that context, we are talking about a right tail test. That is, the value is more than the initial stated value. And for a left tail test, H1 is that mu is lesser than 16. Now, your right tail test is also known as an upper tail test, and your left tail test is also known as a lower tail test. Now, when your test is two tailed, it's also known as a bi directional test. And it simply means that the null hypothesis is that mu is equal to 16, and the alternative would be H1 is that mu is not equal to 16. Now, step three is to choose a preferred level of significance. Okay. Now, the level of significance is uh, is just a value that we use to make decisions in the long run. If I'm supposed to attach a definition to it, it simply means uh, the chance of you committing a type one error. Now, this is something I would like to talk about. I would be talking about rather in later videos in this channel, but let's just hold on to that definition. Now, the standard level of significance value that we use in statistics is usually five percent. Now, if you reduce this value, you are going to be increasing the accuracy of your test. So that means if you are working in a field that requires little error or little to no error, okay, you're going to be using values of alpha level of significance as low as 0.1%, which is 0.001, okay? But the standard value is 5%. The highest you can go is 10%, and you can also go as far as going for 1%. So, so we have 10%, which is 0.1. We have 5%, which is a 0.05. And we have 1%, which is a 0.01. And we can also have 0.1%, which is 0.001. So we use the letter alpha, the Greek letter alpha rather, to denote the level of significance. The next step to perform hypothesis tests, which is step four, is to choose your is to perform your test statistics, okay, or to choose a test statistics. Now the test statistics that you're going to be choosing will be dependent on whether you are assuming normality or not the underlying conditions that define hypothesis test is uh, whether you're working with a normally distributed data or not so when you're working with a normally distributed data there are a set of tests that you can actually use we call this test the parametric test okay we have the likes of the z test we have the t test uh, we have the one way and over we have the two way and over all of these are parametric tests but when you're working with a non normally distributed data that doesn't uh, agree to normality then you're going to be using the likes of man with me you test we have the Friedman test, we have the chi-square. Yeah, chi-square is a form of a non-parametric test. So in this case, we are working with a non-parametric test. So before you perform hypothesis tests, you have to perform a test on normality on your data set. We have the likes of Shapiro Week test, we have the likes of the Komogorov, the Komogorov, oh my goodness, the Komogorov spin-off test. We also have the Anderson Darling test and so much more. So all of those tests are tests that are performed for normality and they have their conditions. We are using the Shapiro Week test, it's just for smaller sample size and the Komogorov and the KS test. You know what? I'll just call it KS test. It's better that way. Now the KS test is basically used for larger sample. After you perform your test statistics and you get your test statistics value the next step is to actually make your decision so we have a decision right here now there are two ways we make decision under hypothesis testing we have the p-value method and we have the critical value method now under the p-value method you are going to be comparing the p-value and the level of significance so a p-value is a probabilistic value that you get from your test statistics so the test statistics gives you your p-value now if you use a software to perform your analysis you always see those p-value now your p-value ranges between zero percent to hundred in later videos, I have the plans to actually talk about the p-value extensively, but for now, let's just know that the p-value is a probabilistic value that can take values between 0 and 1, or we can say between 0% and 100%. And the smaller the p-value, the better it is for our analysis, and the higher the p-value, the in quotes, bad it is for analysis. So, in statistics, we usually range for p-value that are usually lesser than 5%, yeah, we usually try to achieve p-values that are lesser than five percent you know starting from 0 0.0049 or something sorry 0 0.049 exactly yeah so p-values lesser than 0 0.05 five percent is actually a good one to start with so the first method we can use to make decision is the p-value method in this case you compare the p-value 
and the level of significance now our decision rule states that if the p-value is lesser than your level of significance then it means that your test is significant and you're going to reject the null hypothesis and if your p-value is more than your level of significance it means that your test is not significant and you fail to reject the null hypothesis and this is where you, you know make a decision the second method that we use to make decisions in hypothesis test is the critical value method and in this case you're going to be comparing the test statistics with the critical value now this method right here is quite tricky and in fact a lot of people don't use it because it takes a lot of time because in this case you have to consider the direction of your test so meaning for us to use this method we have to know whether our test is a one tail test or a two tail test so basically if i'm working with an upper tail test okay meaning right tail test that if the test statistics is more than your critical value then you have to like reject the null hypothesis otherwise you fail to reject it so your critical value is, is also a singular value that you get from the level of significance so all of those things are values that the software is that you use can actually give to you and if your test is a left tail test it simply means that if your test statistic is lesser than the critical value you reject your null hypothesis and if it is more than you fail to reject the null hypothesis and for a two tail test you obviously have two sides so it's like a combination of uh the lower tail and the upper tail so you can use either of the sides or either of the regions to actually uh, make your decision so when it comes to the critical value method you are all about regions the rejection region and the in quotes the acceptance region now and the last step which is i think step six i've lost count is uh to make the final conclusion in the context of your problem so let's say uh let's go back to the example we said earlier that we said uh, the average age of students is uh, 16 years and let's assume that our alternative hypothesis is that h1 is a mu is more than 16 years so if we are rejecting the null hypothesis it simply means that we are we are in quotes accepting the alternative hypothesis which means that in conclusion there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that the average age of students in this school is actually more than 16 years and that way you have performed hypothesis tests and as simple as that now it may seem like a lot but you still need to like practice and uh, these things can be mathematically demanding but thanks to softwares like excel r python spss Minitab, you don't need to perform your test statistics and do all of the whole mathematics that comes with calculating those things you know sometimes to get the p-value you have to use uh, statistical tables but softwares have eliminated all of these hurdles for you and all you have to do is to just slot in your data set click on the right test or code on to the right test and it will give you all of the values that you need such as your p-value your test statistics among other needed details and all you have to know how to do is to just know whether you want to reject or accept the null hypothesis i hope i've made it as enjoyable as possible for you and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to this youtube channel i wish you the best in your analysis for your research we'll see you in the next one and bye for now